hey, let's let's go ahead and start here the way that I've been starting all these streams recently. Let me do a full webcam here. Okay, here we go. Look, every time I'm sitting in this chair these days, my cat tries to jump on my lap, and please excuse the mess in my home here. Okay, here you go. This is my kitty. This is Jasmine. She keeps trying to jump into my lap and chill in my lap right now. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Hey, everybody, welcome <laughs> to FGC Locals of the World. My name is James Chen, and we've got something special for you guys here. Um, cattail. We've guys got something special for you here today, and that is uh, we have the WFGC Monthly Arms Top 4 coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri, of course, here in the United States, the arms community out there still doing their thing, still, you know, rocking it there and going to all sorts of events and, and running all sorts of tournaments here. And there's definitely a nice little community out there for arms. And so what I'm going to do here is bust out their logo here. Kind of a neat take on the logo. I like the idea with the arch and... Uh, and uh, turning it into an arm that's actually pretty clever right here. So this is the St. Louis Arms Group, the STL Arms Group uh, in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, this is coming to you from uh, Webster University. There you go. So um, uh, shout outs to uh, uh, Jamboree, Hanukkah Jamboree, who you see in the chat right now. Hey, what's up, FGC Watcher? Uh, oh, it's... Ooh, I have the wrong location. I'm sorry. That is bad. Did I? Is that the wrong? Oh, okay, okay. You're right. <laughs> sorry. I'm bad at... There's too many states that begin with the M. So, uh, um, is that right? Ah, oh, shoot. That's so crazy to me. So, Missouri initials... Like, I would have thought that was Montana, but I guess Montana is, uh, Montana is M-N? Oh, M-T. Okay, there you go. Sorry about that, Missouri. <laughs> M-I is Michigan or Mississippi or something like that. Yes, Missouri, M-O. That's my bad. Here, let me make sure I do that in the main title as well, just so I fix that. Uh, let's do that over here. Uh... Yoink. There we go. All right. Whoa, there is something funky driving on the freeway near my home right now. Um, if you heard that weird noise outside, but that's right. We're going to be doing some arms. We're going to be doing arms uh, today here in the top four. As I've mentioned, I am down to do whatever game you want me to do. And uh, Hanukkah Jamboree hit me up and said, you know what? If that's the case, then let's do some arms. Let's do some arms. And this is really cool because uh, this is a series that takes place uh, WFGC monthly. So this is an event that they keep doing, uh, I'm assuming by the name, every month. And uh, let's see all the information they have here. So this is actually uh, largely streamed by uh, Hanukkah Jamboree himself. Uh, he also has some other friends that help him, uh, such as Burr uh, when he's in town, and uh, a couple of guys who help run brackets and stuff, such as Steelhead and Stylo Ren and Hama. And the event name is the WFGC Monthly. As we said, it's a college monthly that happens two or three times a school year. So it's not even actually monthly. It's only just, uh, it's only two or three times a year. Uh, he used to, so Hanukkah Jamboree used to attend uh, as a student and was running their fighting game club, but they continue to uh, run arms as a legacy event for him. So right now the current TO is, is Hama who's actually running it. And this event actually took place uh, a little less than a week ago uh, on November 10th. So I'm going to say that that was uh, Saturday last week. So about a week ago, this is the event that actually uh, took place. And so this, of course, is always streamed on twitch.tv slash stlarms. And uh, on YouTube and on Facebook, you can find them there as well. And they also have me a Discord link. You know what I'm going to do here? Um, I'm going to paste the Discord link into the chat right now for you guys here. So 
pow, like there. There you go. So there you go. There's the Discord link for the STL Arms crew. So if you guys are interested in learning about arms or if you are in the STL area, and you know what? You don't even have to be in the STL area, right? So if you guys are just interested in arms as a game in general, definitely uh, check them out. So, um, oh, oh, are you trying to jump back up here, kitty? Are you trying to, are you trying to jump back up here onto my lap? No. She's just trying to get my intention. Okay, here we go. But yes, so, uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, Oxy in the chat says, we try and run it monthly. It just doesn't always work out that way, especially with winter and summer breaks. It is absolutely understood. Let me tell you something. One of the hardest things to do is to run uh, a weekly event, right? Even a monthly is hard to run, right? Even a monthly is really difficult to run. And uh, I, again, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this series, the FGC Locals of the World, was a means by which I could, you know, try to, you know, showcase some of the TOs and some of the guys who are uh, doing this, who are actually, uh, you know, taking their time and running these events all the time. And so uh, I set this out for anybody, and I uh, was contacted once again by Hanukkah Jamboree for this. Now, if you guys are watching this and are interested also in doing an FGC Locals of the World, if you have a local that you want to showcase on this stream, you can message me on Twitch. Uh, I'm mean on Twitter. Uh, DM me. My DMs are open. So you can slide right on in and uh, message me, and we can discuss rates, or you can uh, email me at jchenzer at yahoo.com. Full disclosure, this is a paid service uh, for now, for now. And uh, the goal basically is, uh, you know, I'm going to be spending time doing this. So, you know, uh, you know, obviously I'll be charging a little bit for these services, but I try my best to make it very reasonable, you know, even for, you know, especially for games like ARMS, which I don't know, you know, I'm definitely <laughs> not going to sit here and be like, oh, I'm going to make you, I'm going to make you pay all this money for my, my, my terrible ARMS commentary. But, you know, um, that's the thing. I'm, I'm down to work with every scene. And I'm also working very, very hard uh, to uh, try to find a sponsor for this event. I, if I can get a sponsor for the entire FGC Locals of the World series, then the service will become free to everybody. That's the long-term goal. If I can get a sponsorship for this, then they can basically fit you know, the cost for everybody, and then everybody can use the service for free. So that's the idea. The other extra benefit that I give is down there, you know, obviously it's dependent on the kindness of strangers and friends and all that stuff like that, but there is a donation counter and a bits counter at the bottom of the screen. Any and all donations obtained during the course of the stream of the event that I am restreaming, any donations and bits I receive will go directly back to the group that contacted me. So in this case, any donations, any bits I get will go right back to the STL Arms group. So that's the idea here. So, but let's uh, let's talk about Arms for a little bit here. Okay. So uh, I am not super familiar with this game. So obviously, uh, as I'm doing commentary for this, this will be a learning process for me. Uh, I've read a little bit here and there about it, but uh, what I do like about ARMS is that it is kind of a different take on the, uh, I, I'm not sure like what the genre is called, but Virtual On, Gundam, those kind of games, the first person, you know, games, arena games, where it's a lot about dashing and trying to, tra you know, uh, chase people and, and get them to commit to unsafe attacks and uh, a <laughs> wee boxing genre. <laughs> there you go. But I mean, what's cool about it is this fits right into the virtual on and Gundam uh, genre of games. And, you know, I've often said that I believe virtual on is straight up a fighting game because of all the things that are involved with it. And it arms is, is, is much the same way. You know, it's still one on one. It's still a lot about footsies. It's still about, about poking and with punishing and, you know, baiting people into doing things is so much about positional uh, awareness. So if you guys aren't familiar with the game, uh, we'll, what we'll be watching is a split screen view. So we'll actually be watching both players at the same time, but you'll be following behind one of the characters and their whole idea is they're just trying to punch the other guy with their spring arms. And there you go, Krokel already with the start off here. So we've got five bits here. So let's get this in here. 
Woo, there you go. Five cents. Woo, there we go. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a start. It's a start, you know. Um, but basically, um, so the idea is you have 15 different characters that you can play in the game. And uh, they all have, you know, different special abilities depending on the characters. Some of them are going to be brawlers. Some of them, for example, uh, the heavier characters will do more damage on throws, but their movement is limited. Limited, Very similar to standard fighting games. There's going to be characters who are more mobile, who have cute little gimmicks that allow them to, uh, you know, for example, dodge things more. Like one character, I think it was the, the ninja, if he charges his dash... Like, he'll duck under attacks and stuff like that. No, I think it was somebody else. It was one of the other characters. But in any case, like I said, I was trying to read up on this as much as I can. And what even makes it a little bit more deep is that each of the characters has three different kinds of boxing gloves that you can uh, equip. And shout-outs to Breezy Dive for the quarter right there. So now we are up to 30 cents here. But yeah, Kid Cobra is the one that can do it. That's right, Snake Man. <laughs> and uh, the, the cool thing about it is every character can also has available to them multiple types of uh, arms, as you want to call it. So the standard one that everyone is going to be used to, of course, is going to be the uh, boxing glove, is the, is the glove arm, which is pretty straightforward. You can curve them a little bit depending on how you want to aim it. You do that with the analog controller. So you punch and then you can curve the punch a little bit. But then there's the curve type, which curve even more than that. There's the, 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 the multi-shot type. Uh, what are they called? Yeah, multi-shot type, which kind of like are more of a spread cannon. There's the heavier weapons. There's all sorts of different kinds of arms that you can equip and because you have two arms shockingly you can change it and it really adds to kind of the customization and the change of the strategy uh, of the characters right so if you're fighting against certain people and you know like certain characters and like this is a really mobile character I'm gonna try to choose the wide one to try to limit their movement a little bit and then just use a curve or something like that you know but of course it's limited to based on which one which character you pick they don't have every single arm available to them they can only pick between one and three arms basically so one of three types of arms and so uh, there's like missiles beams uh, uh, shield nunchuck umbrella umbrella arms and then arms that are just completely unique that are uh just their own type basically that, that don't fall into any other category and um there's a lot of crazy tactics in this game as i've been doing research for so you know at first when you watch it it looks very straightforward but then i started reading about these parry dash cancels and then i started oh shout outs to eat sports thanks for the donations right there <laughs> Oh no, I have the wrong title here. Let me change that really quick. Uh, WFGC, uh, you're right. Oh great, all these Street Fighter players, uh, all these uh, Street Fighter guys are running in here and going, what the hell is going on over here? Why am I sitting here uh, watching this? Uh, but you should. If you came in here expecting some Street Fighter, uh, and you're seeing arms instead. This is my bad right here. I've just updated the title here. If you're seeing some arms instead, you should stick around. You should stick around and watch this and, and really kind of see what kind of high level stuff is going on uh, from all the different uh, fighting games out there. So this is definitely a different genre than what you're used to. And if you're not used to watching this, it's hard to understand. But like I said, there's all these crazy high level techniques that I was finding out. You know, there's supers in this game and the supers you can actually like alpha counter with supers and things like that and so there's a lot of crazy techniques there's combos dependent on the stage so if there's trampolines i can throw you into a trampoline you bounce off of it and then i can beat the crap out of you with super combos and all this stuff like that it's really 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 crazy so um and yeah arms is selling super well in in japan so uh, hi kitty jumping on my lap again uh the cat there you go hi kitty and uh, so yeah, so there's a lot of stuff, a lot of technique in this game, and I'm gonna be learning this myself as I commentate this. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, but you know what? Enough talking about this. Let's go ahead and get started with some arms, so you can actually watch this. Okay, kitty. I gotta do some commentary now. All right. So let's go ahead and get started with this. But uh, of course. Um... <coughs> 
Uh, Claro, it'll probably show up uh, slowly. That's the way it's, I've seen it work. The subs will come in and then it takes like a little bit before it shows up or something like that. Jasmine has been super lap caddy uh, recently, Mr. Henry. It's pretty crazy. Uh, but yes, uh, Hanukkah, Jamboree, Dastardly, Stylo, and Steelhead are doing a lot of the this work over here. Um, yeah, you can play. Mostly, I've heard most people play on Standard Pad. I think there are some people who play on the uh, the regular pad. And, and oh, yeah, by the way, eSports donation for $10. Shout outs to Eat Sports out there. Wow, good good stuff, good stuff. So let's go ahead and do this here. So the first thing that I do here, once again, is you don't need me, just need my voice. And let's move this into position over here, like so, boom. So this is the St. Louis Arms Group, St. Louis, Missouri, which is abbreviated MO, as I've discovered today. And let us bring up the screen here. So this is the top four. So we're going to start with uh, losers semis. And it's going to be Steelhead versus Stylo Ren. Steel, uh, Steelhead versus Stylo Ren. Let me make sure I have this on highest quality here. All right. So once again, um, let me know the volumes here. I'm going to try well, to keep the volumes a little bit low here, but it looks like we're going to be starting with, uh, hang on a second, I, I have, I, I'm all ready for this. It's Lola Pop and Max Steel, if I'm not mistaken. So Max Steel is on the left and Lola Pop is on the right. And uh, I'm sorry, not Max Steel, Max Brass. Max Brass, that's my bad. Max Brass, and so just to give you guys just a little bit of uh, background information on this a little bit, uh, let's see here. Max Brass can temporarily increase the size of his upper body in which his punches will be permanently charged. And then that way he becomes a heavy character. So it'll be, uh, he'll be resist getting knocked down like uh, other heavyweight characters. Uh, Lola Pop, if I'm not mistaken, has the ability to like kind of float in the air and, uh, uh, yeah, so she can inflate herself and she can cancel into a fast dash or a high jump uh, while inflated. So uh, she can kind of do, has a little bit of extra movement options. So let's go ahead and get started here. And uh, once again, we're going to be watching this split screen on both sides. You can see right here also, uh, let me do this. For, let me also mention this as well, that Max Brass here is going with... Uh, let's see, uh, I have this all ready to go over here. He's going with the Nade Glove. So the glove is the standard that you see on the right side. And he's going with the Kablammer Hammer on the left side. So the hammers are definitely, uh, like, they're, they, they stretch out and then they try to strike a certain spot on the screen uh, to attack the opponent. And you can see here Lola Pop is going with the uh, Seeky Missile which is a homing missile, of course. And then also you can see just going with the standard nade glove right here. So there we go. So that's the start right here. So we've got a uh, big damage and standard glove, and we got a seeker versus a regular glove. Again, Max Brass on one side and Lola on the other side. And we just had Caramel Jenkins donate some money over here. Oh, wow, nice this for the St. Louis scene. Thank you very much. $10 donation from uh, Caramel Jenkins. So there we go. So we are up to $20.30. Woo! Okay, let's go. Let's start with this right away. Okay, it looks like the arena that they're in is a pretty standard arena right now. I don't see a lot of crazy stuff in the background going on over here. But yeah, you see right there, uh, Lola Pop able to inflate herself, but starting with a throw right away. And yes, there are throws in this game. So Mac Bra Max Brass uh, definitely wants to try to go for those a little bit. If I remember seeing if he manages to get some throws, he can charge himself up a little bit here. Gets Lola Pop knocked down. Lola Pop in the air. Nice dodge, but 
not able to punish. Now, keep in mind that, you know, once you've thrown out the arms, if you dash and throw out the arms, you have a little bit of delay at the end of dashes, so that's when you try to chase him down. And nice activation of the rush to get big damage already, you can see right now. Big damage, and Lola Pop already down, almost no life here, but, you know, you can get a lot of good sequences once you knock them down. You could really trap them, and there we go. Knock down and in the corner. Let's see if she can keep him locked over there, and if he can get out, and activates the rush, but good avoidance right there from Steelhead, so Steelhead just completely negated that, and uh, I didn't see on his screen, I think he was defending it, and here we go, trying to chase her down here, and staying in the air, but knocked down, getting up now, let's see, activates his own rush, and that was a beautiful whiff punish right there, so one of the key things about rush here, is that rushes allow you to cancel the, the activation of the rush can be can basically cancel all sorts of things, including block stun. So while you're blocking stuff, you can actually activate the rush and counter people if their arms take too long to retract, for example. But right there, we see a nice hit confirm from Stylo Ren into the rush, so getting huge damage already. And just like that, in less than 20 seconds, Lollipop with Stylo Ren, Stylo Ren's Lollipop taking that round just like that it was so fast holy crap and of course you can deflect other people's punches that are coming at you you can punch a punch uh, i think that's limited to certain characters or if that i think it just depends on the arms that they're using certain arms are considered weaker yeah look at all the defending right there taking a bunch of chip damage from that rush and was that a tea bag from steel <laughs> That's what it looked like to me, but nice range. Dang, okay, good reach over there. Trying to go for the throw, but Lola, nice nice job from Stylo Ren there with the avoidance, but getting punched out of the air, and now has to get up and see if you can find a way to get up safely here, but now, yeah, you can see the hammer striking down right over there, and now you can see the pressure into the rush right now. Again, big damage, and you can see how quickly a match can turn thanks to these rushes. Of course, building meter, you build meter by punching a lot, and there we go. Now Stylo Ren gets a throw. So the opportunity here, catching all the way up, but she's down to almost no life. Needs to find a way in, but a nice throw from Steelhead catching Stylo right at the end of his dash right there. Okay, so good job right there. And the throws will always do a fixed amount of damage depending on the character. Different characters will do different amounts of damage with their throws. For example, the big fighters usually do heavier damage with their throws. And uh, looks like uh, Lola Pop, it looks like Stylo is going to change the, uh, the glove choice here. So we're going to change the glove choice here. And it looks like Steelhead is going to stick with what he was using before. <laughs> is that robot say jam? Oh my god. Okay, uh, let's see here. So Lola has gone with the Seeky, and instead of the standard glove, Lola has decided to go with the Megawatt, which is a heavy glove. So she's going to go, she, uh, he's going to change over to a heavy glove, perhaps to try to do a little bit more damage. Of course, the heavy gloves, uh, you know, they're slower, but they do a lot more damage, and these weapons can actually block enemy attacks. So there you go, right there. So... Uh, if you, uh, so I guess different rule sets let you switch weapons or not, but here we go. So right back into it. There we go. Oh wait, did she switch it again? Did she switch it again right there at the last second here? Let me see. Uh, I didn't see this. Uh, oh yeah, she went back to the Seeky. Okay, never mind. But Seeky and then the, the other glove over here and this one. This glove right here is the is the roaster glove. So the roaster glove over here, and it has a. Actually, that's a great question. I, I wanted to ask somebody, an arms expert, on this. But what is the difference between the elements? So like this one has a fire attribute to it. So uh, I'm not sure the details on that. If anyone in the chat would let me know around there. But here we go. Let's continue forward here. <laughs> And let me know how the volume is, if the, if the commentaries are not uh, overlapping with each other. But one of the tough things about this, obviously, is when you're watching both sides of this here, uh, trying to watch both sides. But nice range with that hammer again. He's really, I mean, from what I've read, it sounds like the armors are a little bit harder to aim with, maybe, because they have to strike the ground. Or, or is it maybe that they just have a little bit more startup? But right now, 
I feel like Steelhead has just been doing a really good job with his throws, and look at this, just uh, doing a really good job zoning. But here we go, knockdown. Let's see if he can get up and uh, defend right there. Yeah, you say right there, uh, able to deflect one of the punches. And going with the hammer, but he's going to get whip punished. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Gets hit from long range while his arm was retracting, but he's got his own right now. And Lola's just going to block all that. You see all the chip damage. You see all those little fives generating off of her. That's because she was defending against it and chipping nice dodge in the air and counter attack from Stylo Ren. And now Stylo Ren gets the throw, and that's not going to quite finish it off. Oh my god, it's not going to kill quite yet. And so right now defending, but you see the chip damage right now. He's taking little bits of chip as it goes. But uh, maybe you can't die by chip damage, but a uh, nice hit right there uh, from Stylo Ren. Ah, uh, okay, so uh, explode, so fires do more damage and knock down armored characters. Electric one paralyzes. Okay, there you go. Yeah, very neutral base game. But like I said, this is very similar to what I've seen from Virtual On and Gundam games and stuff like that. That's what these games are about. Although this one adds an extra element in there in that the arms can be you know curved and aimed a little bit, whereas a lot of the stuff in Virtual On and Gundam games they just kind of fire the weapons and. Uh, and uh, basically, the, 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 the shots will just do what they do. So there's a little bit, also a lot of anticipation. You try to punch where you think the characters are going to end up, and so that they end up dashing into your hands and stuff. So there's a lot of good neutral in this game. The combos are not big. Usually the combos, the best you're going to get is a one-two punch. Right, so one, two, kind of like that, right? And you can see one of the advantages of the heavy character is he got punched, but not getting knocked down. So you don't have to worry about the Oki as much, but obviously you sacrifice a lot of speed and stuff. Whereas uh, Lola, every time she gets punched, she gets just knocked to the floor. Oh my God, just barely missed her. And there we go, good avoidance right there. But now the throw, you can't defend against the throws. And now here we go. Oh, Rush versus Rush. Oh, but there you go. Stylo Ren getting the hit in there. They both activated the Rush at the same time, but you saw Stylo swerving a little to the right, and it looked like Steelhead was trying to aim exactly where Lola was originally. And so uh, Stylo is able to take that one. Dude, Dalsam would be an awesome guest character in this game. That would be awesome. If they could put all the stretchy characters, like if they put Dalsam and then they put like Necro and then, you know, <laughs> put all the stretchy characters into this game. But I'm uh, going to change colors on Steelhead over here. Uh, the chip damages the arms themselves. And once an arm gets disabled, they can't block. Ah, there you go. Beautiful stuff. Shout outs to Dick Dastardly S4 in the chat for the arms information uh, in, uh, in the chat right now. So yes, you can't die by chip, but you can get your arms broken. Oh, again, nice throw once again. And there is a crazy technique. I don't know if Steelhead is doing it, but normally when you throw by hitting both arms at the same time. So you punch with both arms and you'll see the little yellow electric bar in between the gloves. And that indicates that it's trying to throw. Now, the width of the hands apart from each other is obviously the throw range. However, apparently there's a technique that you can use to actually widen the throw range of your character. And that's really interesting. And you can see one of the different things now is they're on a different stage and they've got a column here. So now they're using the column for defense. But as you can see, the columns will break. And if you throw characters, you can also throw them into the columns and break it. But you can see that they are trying very hard to use these items here and again very similar to virtual on virtual on has a similar mechanic with the stages will have different blocks and stuff like that that you can try to hide behind and there you go that one that column is down again and man max the steelhead is just angry at that column he was just punching that column but nice dodge but you know what didn't quite get it and now uh stylo is just going to defend against that not going to try to go in any too hard was avoided the, uh, the the start of the rush and then just defended the race nice punch to the face direct hit but look at this counter hit and knock down so she's got to get up and she's good looks like she's going to try to use the column no actually moves away from the column and gets hit again and now just a little bit of damage left see if she can avoid this Nice. Gets the knockdown on Max Steel on, on Steelhead. Gets the throw. Here we go. This is a big opportunity for her. And she has Rush all ready to go. Oh, wait. But the time ran out. I didn't see the timer. 
I didn't see the timer and the time ran out uh, in that match. Is that what happened? Is that what I missed right there? I was just paying attention to their energy meter. And if you look at the little yellow triangle next to the character's energy meter down there, that is their super meter. As soon as it's flashing and on fire yellow, that means they can activate the rush. The blue bar is their health meter right there. Yeah, so I didn't notice the timeout because I'm so entranced by uh, the neutral game here. And again, okay, nice avoidance right there from Steelhead. So Steelhead right there. Yeah, you can see defending right there and then trying to counter punch right away. Activates the rush. Oh, a counter rush. So they're gonna try to counter. And you know what? Stylo Ren came out. Oh, actually, no, they traded right at the end there. I thought uh, uh looked like a Stylo Ren came out on top, but there you go. There's the weakness right there of defending too much is you're not expecting the throw coming. And now Steelhead with a distinct life lead. But like I said, we can see how fast this can go down and change. But of course, it's gonna be a little tougher when you can't knock the opponent it down as easily and like I said Max Brass I keep calling him Max Steel because he's being used by Steelhead Max Brass over here uh, is harder to knock down than a character like uh, like Lollipop but right now good movement right now both of these players have barely been able to get hits against each other right now they're really just kind of fishing and poking and trying to see if they find a way to get him but there we go so the problem right now is stylo knows he needs to go in he needs the damage and activates they both activate lots of chip here but only 10 seconds left not a lot of time left for stylo to do anything and at that point in time steelhead could have probably just turtled and been fine and steelhead is going to take it 2 to 1 versus stylo ren here on the losers semis so there you go and uh let us move on to the next match over here Ooh. all right and Pow. Let's go to the next match, and it's going to be Hanukkah Jamboree versus Dastardly. So Hanukkah Jamboree uh, playing himself, going with Twintel uh, versus Dr. Coil. Dr. Coil was the latest character that was uh, became playable, I guess was a boss character in the game, and is now uh, playable. So the 15th character added to the roster there are 15 characters total uh twin tell was also a dlc character if i'm not mis no she was not she was one of the original 10 she was one of the original 10 characters and uh twin tell is a pretty uh standard fighter uh not 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 a lot of uh crazy ability over here but a very well-rounded uh character here uh, but uh, she can charge her punches in midair by holding the dash button, and she can move quickly uh, while charging as well. And of course, uh, Doctor Coil. Doctor Coil um, does not have a jump. This is going to be interesting. She levitates as all, at all times and is able to increase her height with the jump button, so she can dash and guard at any height. Interesting. Okay. But she's registered as being on the ground at any altitude. So uh, she can also activate an additional arm by charging for a long period of time. And she'll get an extra arm on her shoulder. <laughs> Man, okay. And she can also temporarily disappear while moving. Uh, an ability activated by holding guard or getting up after being knocked down. Sounds like a very, very interesting character. Let's find out what this character is going to do here. Uh, but what's interesting here is it looks like, uh, well, let's see what weapons they go with here. Let's see what they go with here. Yo, fellas, TV host in too. And it yeah, looks ready. like, oh. Check your controls. <laughs> Button config. Button config. Uh, oh, so Coil is considered top tier then in the game right now. Okay. So you and Hamlet can call it. Check your controls. Let me lower the volume of that just a little bit here. Okay, I did not see what controls that she, what, what uh, gloves that she went with. It looks like she is going with the, uh, uh, let's see here. Oops. 
Sorry, I'm, I have uh, wiki pages opened up here so that I can give you all the information at the same time. That's the other glove that we saw used earlier. That's the roaster glove. But then also being used, it looks like the umbrella. Okay, that's interesting. So uh, Dastardly is going with an umbrella style of weapon. And what's interesting about the umbrella weapons is that... Uh, they can have their speed change depending on how far away you are from the opponent, and they have really, really good honing, uh, homing abilities and a large hitbox. So let's see what uh, Hanukkah Jamboree goes with over here. What does Hanukkah Jamboree, Jamboree go with? There we go. Okay, so it looks like... Okay, cool. So we're going to see an example of one of the multi-shots going with the tri-blast on the left hand. And then, of course, on the right hand, we are going... It looks like a heavy glove. That glove is the uh, lockjaw. Okay, so that is a unique... A unique glove that is... Uh, let's see here... Uh, it's a small size, it only has one eye on top of the device, it opens up when charged. It fires a decently sized red and black explosive ball when charged. Similar, so in, in, in other words, Hanukkah Jamboree sounds like he is going for a more projectile based kind of uh, fight here. If both of them are projectile based uh, gloves here. And uh, what's interesting about this is I'm not even sure if this is a thing or not. Some people can actually tell me about the, the, the facts about the different gloves. If you see which gloves that your opponent picks, that can also determine which side that you, de you prefer to dash against them, right? So if one hand, for example, has a less homing kind of glove, is it more likely that you want to dash into that direction? So in other words, if their right glove has less homing, so for example, the umbrella has good homing, right? As opposed to the heavy glove on the left hand. So if you're fighting against Dastardly and you see that, are you going to want to dash to the right more often so that you have a better chance to avoid the heavy glove as opposed to the umbrella? Uh, and yes, Dick Dastardly, Dastardly, of course, is playing serious. Absolutely. So there you go. So you have to be very cognizant of what kind of gloves that they're using on which hand so you'll know which way to dash and avoid things. So there you go. So just like Tekken, except it's customizable. Whee! But <laughs> here we go. So Twintel, of course, attacks with her hair. As you can see right there, firing the wide shot, you can already see the kind of effects that the wide shot has. If you look on Dastardly's screen right there, covers a lot of that space. Of course, obviously not going to do as much damage as a lot of the other ones, but uh, definitely good for controlling space and controlling area. And you can see right there, uh, you know, a Coil disappearing a little bit on Wake Up and not really ever jumping, but actually just kind of hovering and stretching up and down, but always counted as ground. This is such a weird character. Character. Uh, but again, another throw. Good job from Dashley going for multiple throws. They're getting some stuff out of throws and looked like tried to do a guard cancel, but might have. I didn't see if it was in time, but you know what? It worked out anyway. And there you go, Dashley taking round at number one. Uh, Coil is like guile, not necessarily defensive, but getting in on a strong guile is hard and tough to constantly apply pressure. Coil's movement is so good. Okay, interesting. So uh, just a very zoning kind of defensive character, hard to get in on because it looks like you can just kind of fly at all sorts of different levels. It's hard to... So because she can just kind of fly in the air for a little bit, it's not like everybody else when they jump, you can expect them to come back down at a certain amount of time. It looks like she can just kind of go up and down on her own uh, whenever she feels like it. So it's really hard to lock her down. And look at this dastardly getting in with the rush with punish right there big damage already so here we go uh, activated the rush but not in time and so dastardly is going to defend against that and just take a bunch of chip damage right now oh there we go yeah you when you're close up throws are more dangerous obviously because you have less time to react to throws because they don't they don't take as long to get there and i guess a, a common tactic that's a good scrub killing tactic is to get really close to the opponent jump and throw and that's like the early that's the early op tactic at lower levels of uh arms and so it's one of those things that you just have to learn how to fight against early on because that's how powerful nice dodge right there you saw that she uh that hanukkah jamboree was in the middle of the punch but was able
able to avoid and now counters with her own rush. Good job there. Punches away the throw attempt. Yes, you can also defend that way as well. Uh, attack the throw attempt. Uh, you just can't defend against it. And there you saw, I think I saw it. I think I saw the random the extra arm on the shoulder. And that throw might be just enough to give King Coil. No, actually, no, no, no. Hanukkah Jamboree got the hit with only two seconds left on the clock. I thought that last throw from uh, Dastardly was going to do it. But just with two seconds left on the clock, a punch to the face. And uh, Hanukkah Jamboree ties it up one to one. There you go. Great job. Oh, she has an additional dodge direction. Ah, so she can dodge up as well. Okay, so that's... Or down if she's already in the air. Oh, man. Activated the rush but got punched and now is getting up in invisibly. And there we go. You saw the guard cancel right there from Hanukkah Jamboree. Blocked the punch and then immediately canceled into rush but didn't quite catch Dastardly in time. So Dastardly now tried to get a two-hit combo. A little too slow on the umbrella arm right there. And again, oh, punch to the face right there. And again, another nice hit there, but not a knockdown. But getting the throw now. Getting the throw, and you can see right now that Twin B, uh, I'm sorry, Twin B, Twintel, down to very low health right now. I have to get used to these characters' names. I apologize. But again, where is she? And you see, look at that. On Hanukkah Jamboree screen, she is literally invisible. So obviously on Dr. Coyle's screen, you can see the little blue outline. But when you looked at Hanukkah Jamboree screen, there was nothing. So you have no idea which direction she's going. So that just adds to the slipperiness of that character. Man, this character looks broken, man. This character looks broken. <laughs> uh, 10 bits from rendered rover so let's add that to the bit counter over there <laughs> woohoo there we go this character looks hella good ah, you know, I'm not saying that to downplay what dastardly is doing but uh, but okay he's actually saying it's true <laughs> nice <laughs> But this character looks hella good, hella good. I mean, obviously meant to be like the boss character of the game, right? So, uh, like the main boss of the game. So, uh, it's always tough to, 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 to balance boss characters like that, so. Um, right, it can be played head-to-head, -head. yes, yes, so, obviously, but they're doing the side-by-side the -side over here. So, here we go. And, again, an another stage with uh, uh, more field items right here so the ability now to defend against uh you know use the stage as a defense and also you can see also different elevation as well so now uh that'll come into a little bit of factor i I'm, i think i'm not sure if elevation makes a huge difference in this game uh does the umbrella also act as a shield once it extends all the way because you see that once the umbrella extends all the way it opens up and kind of spins around and it looks like it forms like a little bit of a shield as well so it takes a while to come oh look at that punching on both sides of the column holy crap that was awesome from dastardly and dastardly now with a big life lead hasn't barely taken any damage just yet another punch to the face and uh, Hanukkah Jamboree trying to do his best job here, uh, trying to get some hits, but just can't seem to get anything going right now. Finally, there we go. One, two punch. One, two punch right there. Oh, but then just got caught at the end of her dash right there and dastardly going up one round here. Uh, oh, dang. And so Coil also doesn't have any landing lag because of the, the general flight. Uh, and that is always, of course, one of the weaknesses of jumping and of dashing is that you have the lag at the end of that. And that's how you can attack people uh, and, and, and punish them a lot of the times. And so by not having the landing lag, she has the extra movement options and without the lag. There we go. Gets a knockdown here. But yeah, you can barely see Dr. Coil on... Uh, yeah, see, look at that. She just disappears off of a Hanukkah Jamboree screen. Now, of course, they are playing side-by-side -side split screen, so maybe he could just, like, you know, glance at the other screen. <laughs> but look at this right now. The Hanukkah Jamboree is playing fantastically right now. It's gotten a lot of good hits. There we go. Gets the knockdown. Tried to confirm into the rush. Didn't quite get it, though. Got the knockdown thanks to the missiles, thanks to the multi-shot, but couldn't get quite get the rush to connect in time. 
And so Dastardly with the chance to survive and Dastardly of course has his own rush and once you have a rush everything changes because like I said you can cancel the whiff on your punches so it looks like you're vulnerable and then all of a sudden you'll get beat up and so you really have to be careful but there we go down to almost no health and at this point in time Dastardly could probably tell the opponent had way too much health not going to spend his rush right there going to save it for round number three. Ah, there you go. So elevation is hugely important according to uh, Guoforum. Okay, uh, but uh, certain arms, the certain gloves have different kinds of height tracking abilities. So there you go. So elevation definitely makes a big difference. And that's why a character like Coil would be so powerful because she can change her elevation at any given time and stay there and not have to worry about landing lag. Oh, there we go, the 2-1-2 two, two punch into the rush, and that is going to give Dastardly a huge life lead to start here in this round three of uh, winner's finals. So good defense right now, but Twintail sitting on the rush. There it is, activates it, beautiful counter right there. Saw that Dastardly committed to a punch, got the rush, and countering. Here he gets the knockdown, look at this. Slowly working on the comeback. Hard to see which way she's getting up. Went for the throw, couldn't quite get it. A nice avoidance, but now here comes the, ah, the rush. The rush activated and caught Hanukkah Jamboree and Dastardly is going to go up 2-0. Of course, this is winner's side, so this is going to be a best out of th uh, first to three. Ah! Sorry, guys, trying to grab some water. Okay. Oh my God, what is happening? <laughs> Oh, it looks like uh, we have Hanukkah Jamboree. Oh, no, no. Uh, did he switch gloves? Yeah, he switched to a different glove right there. Okay, so going with a different glove set to see if he can turn the tide from there. Dastardly, I think, going to stick. Unless the, uh, the rule change, the rule set right now does not allow for changes for the winner's side. Nice knockdown right over there. And now trying to hide behind the column. You can see you can kind of punch around the columns and then hide behind them afterwards. And now, yep, trying to take down the columns to try to prevent Dastardly from hiding behind that anymore. So Twin Tail right now, really trying hard to keep a zone. There we go, the multi-hit and the combo with the follow-up punch right there. Went for the throw, but uh, predicted Dastardly was going to wake up towards uh, her left. But uh, um, to, to his left, but he woke up to his right and so uh, missed the throw. That was definitely a, a, a hard read right there from Jamboree. Gets the knockdown situation. Can't figure out where he's getting up because of that invisibility. And just trying to now, it looks like uh, Hanukkah Jamboree trying to hide behind the column. Finally, the column is broken down. A beautiful whiff punish right there from Hanukkah Jamboree. Gets the rush. And you can see right now, Coil with almost no health left. But Twintel also trying to stay survive right now. Not much health, but good block against the rush from Coil. Nice! There, you saw right there, was able to dodge to the left and get the hit. Good defense right there, but... Again, good defense. Looks like just trying to run out the clock, but the arms are going to get broken. Yeah, the gloves are. He's going to get guard broken. And now the throw at the end. And you know what? Dastardly with the read right there. That Hanukkah Jamboree was trying so hard to play defensive at the end there that he went for the point blank throw and was able to take that round at the very last second. Great job from Dastardly. And now Dastardly... At match point, activates the rush. This is how you want to begin right now for uh, Hanukkah Jamboree. This is how you want to get back in there is by landing one of those rushes. Oh, tried to get away from that punch, but just got knocked down. And now going one, two. Yep, there you go. And knocked down again. Dastardly trying to chase her down. And, and there's a column right over there. So let's see if Hanukkah Jamboree decides to try to use that as a way to guard. Yep, guards behind it right there. And that's a great way to weather that rush right there. You saw a lot of that rush was absorbed by the column. And so now Jamboree is going to get some good hits now. Going to get some good hits in there. Uh, and now activates his rush for another 
knock down here. 370 damage total right there. Only needs to do a little bit more damage, but gets thrown. Uh-oh, here we go. Opportunity now for Coil. Coil just needs a few more hits to catch up, and we saw last round how at the last second, but look at that, a prediction on the punch right there to the right. Caught dastardly right as he was trying to dodge away from the wall. So good read right there from Jamboree to catch her, uh, to catch Coil as she was moving away from the wall. All right. And again, can't see her because she turns invisible because why not? Oh, you can still see her a little bit. So you can see her a little bit if you're very... If you're paying attention, oh, beautiful throw on her wake up. Caught her and was able to see where, where Dastardly was going while she was sliding on her wake up. And so that he was able to uh, grab her, uh, grab Coil, grab him off the floor. It's, it's always tough when the guy is using a girl uh, and I keep using switching pronouns. So apologies about that. Nice throw from Dastardly here. Dastardly, of course, needs a big comeback here, unfortunately. Down a lot. And yeah, you see right there, whiff. And Jamboree knew. Jamboree knew. As soon as he saw the whiff, he didn't commit to trying to whiff punish. Instead, just waited, baited out the rush activation, blocked it just fine. And there you go, the multi-shot doing its work, catching Dastardly at the end of his dash. And there you go, twin tell. And Hanukkah Jamboree taking their first game. Right, you can definitely see the little shadow of where Coil is, but it's really hard to see when you're playing this right now, or when, you're, when you're in the midst of a crazy match. It's definitely very hard to see. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. And, uh, oh, oh, oh. Okay, going for the regular glove and the umbrella this time. Okay, so not going for uh, the, the, the heavier glove. Going for the regular glove this time to see if that'll work out a little bit better. Obviously, uh, less curvy than like the curves and stuff like that, but faster uh, and a good long range. The standard punch, essentially, the, the, gl uh, the glove types right there. Oh man, and right now it looks like it's paying off really well for Dashley. Dashley with a huge life lead to start this right now. Oh, the one-two punch. Good stuff right there from Dashley. And I, I saw the third, the third arm from the shoulder again. But here we go, knockdown. And now Hanukkah Jamboree gets the knockdown again. Sees where she's going. And yeah, you saw right there, predicted where she was going and fired the multi-shots right into her. Uh, but of course, the... Uh, Dastardly counter poking, counter attacking right there and getting the knockdown. So now Dastardly with a huge life lead. So right at this point in time, Jamboree needs to get the knockdown, needs to get, or at least the combo into the rush, I'm, I should say. There he goes, a knockdown, but not in a position that uh, he felt like he was close enough to get the rush. And is, in fact, is going to save the rush for the next round instead. Going to save the meter for the next round. So here we go. Oh, you can switch the, the, the gloves between rounds. I didn't even know you could do that, but is that what she just did? And there we go. Trying to close the distance on her right now. Maybe just because obviously the closer you are, the quicker your uh, punches can hit them. Nice defense right there. Saw that it wasn't a throw, so was going to block. Activates the rush to punish. There we go. And here we go. 360 damage right there. You saw all that life drained off of Dr. Coil right now. And now went for the throw, but deflected the throw. And now Hanukkah Jamboree. Good job right there, knocking, uh, getting the punch in there, but then an activation into the rush by Dastardly. So Dastardly in the air, uh, hovering in the air right now. It's God, it's really hard to tell if she's, like looking at Dastardly's screen, it's really hard to tell when Coil is in the air or when she's on the ground, you know, because she technically just levitates and stuff. So right now, nice punch, 100 damage right there. Gets the long range throw. Great stuff to Dastardly, wow. And then there's that third glove again, coming from the shoulder, what the hell? Man, and now you can see right there, down to no help, but it's so dangerous because Twintel sitting on a full meter right now. They're both at full meter at this point in time and instead goes for the throw. Dastardly is gonna take it over Hanukkah Jamboree. Uh, da Hanukkah Jamboree probably was playing as defensive as possible, scared of the rush, didn't want to commit to anything for the with punish situation, 
but uh, instead, that's why Dastardly went for the throw instead and was able to take that one. So great job to Dastardly. And we are going to be moving on to Losers Finals. But uh, normally when I'm doing these FTC Locals of the World, I have time to stop in between the matches when I'm just watching through a stream like this. This one, I just have the matches here. So I'm going to take a little pause right here just to be able to tell everybody uh, you are watching the FGC Locals of the World. And again, uh, this is where you can uh, basically uh, ask me to do commentary for whatever game you want. If it's ARMS, I'll do ARMS commentary for you guys here. So, um, and I'll do commentaries for you guys. And uh, to help promote your scene. So this is the St. Louis ARMS group. You can see at the bottom of your screen, the stream is twitch.tv slash STL ARMS and the Twitter is at STL ARMS. Uh, there's a, a few ar uh, ARMS communities around the world. So if you want to learn about the game or you want to, uh, you know, increase the, 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 um, the affluence of the ARMS community, it would be, you know, great idea for all the ARMS communities to communicate with each other and really kind of... Uh, you know, follow each other and, and, and work with each other to build a, a stronger community. So, you know, definitely follow STL Arms on all the social medias. You can also find ST, STL Arms on YouTube as well. Just do a search for STL Arms and you'll find them uh, on YouTube as well. Um, but uh, again, uh, also make sure you follow their Twitch channel. And uh, I don't know if these guys are affiliated with Twitch just yet. But uh, if you guys do follow them, uh, make sure you, you know, give them a watch whenever they're playing. Learn more about ARMS and watch all the high-level ARMS plays from dif different players there. Help them try to get to affiliate status over there. And WFGC has a lot of different games. Yeah, th th this is not just ARMS. This just happens to be streamed on STL ARMS from the WFGC, but they also play all sorts of other fighting games as well. Uh, taking a swig of water here. Also want to note that um, right now, uh, as with the FGC Locals of the Worlds that I've all, I have already done, any donations, any bits obtained during the stream will go directly to the streamers. So you can see already here they have earned $20.40. Uh, so that will be going straight back to them. And so shout outs to them. Uh, they will, uh, that way they can help cover some of their costs for uh, hiring me for the FGC Locals of the World. And yes, uh, this is a paid service that I am offering. And I know some people have looked down upon that, but you know what, I'm, it's just one of those things that I gotta do. <laughs> it's time and it's, uh, it's investment and everything like that. However, the whole goal of this is to try to make sure that this uh, series of uh, events, right, this series of uh, uh, streams here uh, becomes popular enough that people watch this a lot and then I can get official sponsors. And if I can get an official sponsor uh, to cover the cost every week, this will be a free service for everybody out there. So basically, if I can find a sponsor for this entire series of uh, uh, streams, then the FGC Locals of the World will become a free service to everyone out there. So there you go. Uh, that's the goal. That's the long-term goal right now. And so hopefully we'll get there at some point in time. But definitely give STL Arms a follow on all their social media. Let's go and continue forward here. So this is going to be uh, Steelhead, who is using Max Brass, going up against Hanukkah Jamboree, who is going with Twintel. And you can see right here, once again, using the hammer and the standard glove. And let's see what a Hanukkah Jamboree goes with. But you can see right there, different uh, initial set of gloves. Oh, that's how it works. That's right. Before the match, you have to pick which gloves you have available to yourself. And then between rounds, you can switch it. So every character can use every glove. Is that the way it works? I'm not 100% sure because... I know uh, Hanukkah Jamboree did not have the curved ones that are, you see at the bottom, the, the, these ones right here. These are the curved ones right there that have much more curve ability over there. Uh, but yeah, so everybody can use any kind of glove. That's the way it works. So you can change their sets that become available that you can change between rounds. 
but between matches you can change what set you have available to you that's the way that it works okay shout out to twin five uh if the tourney is customs you can use any arm got it thank you twin uh twined five twined five for that in uh, for that confirmation right there okay that's cool so in other words you want to get a set that you feel like you can switch between uh based on the, the 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 gloves that they're choosing man there's a lot of depth to this actually because they, there might even be like freaking blind picks necessary depending on what gloves they pick you know like oh if they pick this glove i want to counter with this glove etc etc okay so that's cool stuff but you can see right now they're in the arena with some columns and so they are going to be able to use those as means of hiding but uh and defense right now but of course uh twin tell like i said much the uh much a well-rounded fighter max brass definitely a heavier character harder to knock down uh, can take a lot of more punches. You'll see a lot of times he'll get punched and stay standing, right? Whereas the lighter characters, when they get punched, they get knocked down. And then you have to deal with the Okazemi afterwards. You have to deal with the wake-up game. So, oh, but there you go. Uh, Max Brask. I think if anybody gets hit out of the air, they always fall down, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, except, obviously, for certain characters. Like, I think a Lola Pop, when she's inflated, she doesn't get knocked down or something like that. Or just depends on the characters. But there we go. Activated the rush. Good defense blocking that whole entire thing taking a ton of chip damage right now like right there it's interesting because uh I, it might be because of the stage right now that hanukkah jamboree has decided to go with the uh, multi-shot that's more vertical so instead of the wide the, the multi-shot you notice is up and down interesting interestingly enough so uh that makes it probably so less aim work on the uh on the stages with uh multi levels but right now hanukkah jamboree down in life so badly right now needs to make some sort of comeback is he going to spend the meter right now look at this trying to go for point blank fighting right now oh and then just gets punched in the face oh, right coil is grounded the entire time yeah so so that's the danger of jumping, obviously. If, if you get hit out of the air, even as a heavy character, you will get knocked down. And if you get knocked down, then you got to deal with the Okazemi. <laughs> and uh, right now, oh, nice throw from Steelhead. So Steelhead going for another throw, trying to predict where he was going to get up on the throw. And just, you see, every once in a while, just getting hit by those missiles, but not a huge amount of damage right now. Try to, and you know, that's another thing too, is that, you know, you don't want to throw out both punches all the time. You kind of want to conserve your punches so that you can actually defend. But you can see right now, it looks like Steelhead, uh, his right arm got broken, it looked like. I think that's what the red exclamation mark, and he was kind of leaning and looking a little uh, little uh, worse for wear at one point in time. So if you block too much with one arm, you will start getting guard broken. That, that, that arm can uh, be destroyed at that point in time. Okay. And now, look at them. Both of them using the column. Oh, what a perfect timing right there. The column broke, and he just went right for the throw. Didn't see the throw coming. Nah, good stuff right there. But here we go. Hanukkah Jamboree getting the rush attack to connect. So doing a lot of damage. Catching up in life right now. Oh, no. Tried to dodge, but then got caught by the rush. I think Jamboree had already committed to the dash before he saw the rush activation. He was just dashing and steelhead with the activation and punishing the end of that dash. <clears throat> ah, so heavies only get knocked down by certain elements. Even when hit out of the air, uh, superior fan. Oh, uh, yeah, so there you go. So now they are changing uh, the loadout here. Ah, interesting. So Ice and Electric will just apply the status but not knock them down, which is actually worse since you can get a follow-up instead of just a knockdown. Interesting. Okay. A lot of details here between all the different weapons and stuff. A lot of depth in this game with all the different gloves that you can use. <clears throat> now, hang on a second. So now uh, Hanukkah Jamboree decided to go with that little airplane there. So the airplane instead of the cooler ring. So instead of uh, ice element, he is going with the electric element. So that might be one of the reasons why that he's doing that is because maybe he feels like the electric element will help him a little bit more with that curve weapon. And now you can see going with the uh, horizontal multi-shot instead of the uh, vertical multi-shot. 
So that's going to be able to uh, hopefully control uh, Max Steel's, I'm sorry, uh, Steelhead's movement a little bit more. And you can see right now, it seems like it's working pretty good. So uh, has a life lead at this point in time. But using two columns, right? They're using the, both of these columns to try to hide around. And really, right now, I feel like Max Steele is doing a great job with that and uh, getting a lot of little hits in there, but hasn't been able to catch up. Nice dash right there uh, to avoid. Now, uh, I'm assuming if you have both of your arms punched out, you can no longer dash. Is that is that the limitation, right? As long as you have one arm uh, ready to be used. I, I'm assuming you can still kind of dash a little bit in the middle of a punch because right there it looked like uh, Max uh, Hanukkah Jamboree was completely in the middle of a punch. It was still able to dash and avoid that rush. So, uh, oh, not that one though. Dash right into that one. Okay, block right there, but taking a little extra damage. Is that what the expl Oh man, yeah. And now all of a sudden, Max Steel with the life lead. Yeah, okay, so the more arms you have out, the worse your dash and your jump is. That makes sense. There you go. So you could always dash and jump. Oh, nice! Avoided that and then countered with his own rush and just said, hammer, 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 hammer. Ow! Ow, 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 ow. Okay, so there you go, Steelhead. Uh, so one arm slows you down, so two arms practically roots you. Yeah, that's what I figured. That's what I figured. So that's why you don't want to throw out both arms constantly, because then you just get left as a sitting duck. And so, oh, nice throw. And you see right there, breaks the columns as well. And the different characters throws, throw them in different directions too. So depending on the stage, that's really valuable to know. So for example, on stages with trampolines, you can get combos on them. And so Twin Tail, obviously, you can see throws them towards the right. So you kind of want to make sure that, you know, you never have your left facing a trampoline uh, when you're fighting against her. Okay, defending against those. Very minor chip damage from the multi-shots. There we go. But able to dash and block. So there we go. And now... Uh, Hanukkah Jamboree sitting with uh, a full rush meter as well, but just gets knocked down. And there we go, the activation. You saw both arms out there. So yes, definitely going to connect for sure. All of Steelhead's movement gone with both arms extended like that. That's why it's dangerous to whiff a throw as well. When you whiff a throw, both arms are out. So your movement is very, very limited. Oh, the throw directions are random, huh? I was reading something that was talking about directions that people were being thrown, but uh, maybe the information I was reading was incorrect. I'll have to do some more research on that. Okay, here we go. Rush activated, but able to block in time and just going at it. And you see right there, the exclamation mark on the right side there, almost guard broken, but able to recover now. <clears throat> oh, good punches from Steelhead. And there we go, the activation, but got knocked down, and there it is, it's gone, it's gone. So now uh, Hanukkah Jamboree is not going to have any rush anymore. The rush disappears when you get knocked down like that. Oh, and now just hammered, and so Hanukkah Jamboree with very low health now, no rush, has to build meter, oh, and can't quite avoid the hammer arm right there. So Steelhead is going to go up 2-0. Two to oh, two oh. Oh, one of two ways, according to Superior Fan. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I definitely saw the distances were different, but uh, I was reading something about like how certain characters throw in certain directions, so that's how you want to set up the uh, trampoline combos, and that's kind of what I was going with. There's the commentators right there uh, for the STL crew, the STL Arms crew. Shout-outs to them. Of course, this is happening in a university. This is happening... Uh, at a university and uh, having their own little FGC club over there, which is super cool. <laughs> okay, so some characters throw at different angles. Spring throws like at 45 and brass is 90 degrees. Okay, makes sense. Shout outs to Spike2501. What's going on? All right. And now this one is deaf. Oh my God, the terrain on this one. You can see huge variations in height for the terrain on this one. And right now, it's Max, uh, I'm sorry, Steelhead doing a good job here 
with the start here has a decent life lead and you see twin tail right now trying to get the higher ground and according to star wars of course that means that hanukkah jamboree should win everything at this point because uh he's sitting at higher ground but nope decides to give that up and jumps down and it looks like right there it's steelhead trying to take down that column a little bit so to not let uh, Hanukkah Jamboree hide behind it. Yep, there you go. Column is down right now and really try to aim for it. And here we go. Uh, and just getting little chip damage here and there. Uh, not chip damage, but just minor damage from the multi shot. So little bits, 40 damage here, 50 damage here. But remember, every time Max Steel manages to hit Twintel, he just, with those gloves right there, able to do like 140 damage in a punch and everything like that. You saw her try to predict that she was going to go left, but instead Twintel went right. So uh, trying to always predict which way your opponent is going. All right. Again, avoiding those missiles. Nice dodge of the missiles. And, uh, I, you know, every time you see them pumping like that, I do believe that is them charging their arms. So, like, the characters, when they charge their arms, they get, like, different little po power right here. But Hanukkah Jamboree just doing a great job playing a very defensive round right there. You saw using a lot of the columns and just playing very distanced and just firing those multi-shots just to kind of poke away, like I said. But it looks like the terrain of this stage is definitely seeming to favor Twin tell right now but there you go a nice little hammer shot right there so this is going to be key uh from what i've seen here and what i'm gleaning from this that you know max brown um, that steelhead is going to get a life lead here in this situation because now the onus is on hanukkah jamboree to try to get in there and try to do some damage so you can see twin tail down in life but has the rush so it's dangerous Ooh, both arms sent out there not no opportunity for the combo right there into the rush and then just getting punched and you can see how different it is all of a sudden when Hanukkah Jamboree does not have the life lead here has to take a lot more risks and just eats a lot more punches as a result. There you go, 50 damage, little another 50 damage, just little bits of damage here and there as we go, but 110 damage right there from uh, uh, the right punch right there, but nice knockdown. Still hasn't used the rush. And now I'm going to block all those rushes and counter with her own. No, not going to do that at all. Still, So Hanukkah Jamboree still saving it. No, not that time either. Got the knockdown, but didn't go for the rush at all. Not sure what Hanukkah Jamboree is waiting for, but he's got to use the rush soon because if you don't use it now, you're going to die with it. Well, I mean, he's got another round, so maybe he's saving it for the next round. But if he lands a rush combo right now, should be able to kill. Should be able to kill, but instead gets punched. All right, there we go. Uh, I mean, that was a like a day one assessment from David, so I'm sure it's very much not like that. And there is a lot of guard breaking. There's been a ton of patches for this game since then. So the game has probably changed, and there we go. So finally, Hanukkah Jamboree activating the rush and getting the knockdown. Oh, and a one beautiful punch right there to negate the rush from, from Steelhead. So now, Hanukkah Jamboree with a distinct advantage here. Huge life lead thanks to her rush, and then able to defuse the rush of Steelhead. But a good throw from Steelhead is almost bringing this back anyway. So it's very, very dangerous right now for Hanukkah Jamboree. There we go. Punishing the two-arm attack right there. Able to get the buff, the, the, the punch with the right hand. So obviously the right hand going to be a more damage punch than the uh, multi-shot left hand. There we go. Activated, but again, a beautiful aim right there from Steelhead to negate that rush as well. So diffusing that. And now Steelhead, oh, but you know what? Sometimes the 40 is all you need from the multi-shot. And I swear from far away, Max Brass looks like, like a caricature of Megatron. Like there's just something about the way that his chest is shaped, how it kind of has that flat shape to it and the, and the big broad shoulders. Kind of looks like Megatron from far away at that, in that color. <laughs> Okay. But yeah, like I said, that was a day one assessment. So obviously this game has advanced very heavily since then, including a bunch of really high level tactics too. So like, like instant dash canceling and the punching to use some extra momentum, you know, f with the arms and stuff. But 
Wow, it looks like all three shots there connected against Steelhead. Steelhead now going back to trying to use the column to save himself, to try to hide behind those multi-shots. So I think, uh, yeah, Jamboree's just going to take out the column just like that. But then Jamboree getting punched, didn't see why. That looked like uh, just stopped blocking at the last second right there. And... Uh, Again, hiding behind the column just to try to lower the effectiveness of the multi-shot. The multi-shot obviously is about the range. And so by hiding behind the column, you kind of nullify the middle of it. And so you can just kind of hide there. So look like Jamboree was trying to get in close to try to go for a rushdown tactic a little bit. But then the throw, again, once you're closer range, the throws take less time to uh, punch out to get out there. So you have to react to throws much faster when you're at closer range. Oh, beautiful throw. Wow, great read right there. That was actually pretty far for Hanukkah Jamboree to get that throw. But you can see Hanukkah Jamboree trying to stay in as close as possible. But a great prediction on which way that Jamboree was going to move from Steelhead had the fist raining right at the end of that dash. And again, just trying to block all those multi-shots right now. Oh, nice. Deflected against those multi-shots. And yeah, that's another thing too. You can see punches right through the multi-shots. That's another weakness right there. Nice activation and was able to chase Twintail down before she could get away. She had one arm out and so she was able to dash just a little bit but wasn't fast enough. And there we go. Steelhead is at match point right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, it really looks very strong, the, the, the multi-shot, but obviously the, the damage on it is very low, which is the concern of the multi-shot. So, uh, but if you can get, aim it really well and use it just, it's basically more of a space control nuisance kind of weapon. That's how you want to use uh, the multi-shot. It's, it's like, think of it as like, if you're coming from fighting games, think of it as like a character who does really good chip damage or you deciding to attack with a bunch of lows in Tekken, right? You're just going to take that damage and, and, you know, and try not to let it get to you. But the more you get hit by it, the more annoyed you get. And uh, also, by the time your health starts to drain, all of a sudden you can't just play so passively against it anymore. And there you go. Perfect example of that great round from Jamboree. 1-1 one, one here in game number four. Wow, the multi-shots used to be, uh, oh, grabbing with full rush is still a viable strat. Okay, there you go. Nice hits right there. Oh, look at this. Steelhead just kind of standing his ground a little bit, trying to charge up his punches. Goes in now. There we go. Got a hammer hit right there for 50 damage. But right now, Jamboree playing very defensive style, just blocking. Uh, has been able to see, oh no, okay, saw that the throw was coming, but got the punch before the throw connected, so uh, Jamboree managed to get the punch to connect against uh, Steelhead before, and now look at this, locking him down against the wall, avoided and blocked in time, gonna be able, so right, you saw the dash into block to defend against the rush while only one arm is out. But right now, Jamboree with a huge life lead and the rush. But actually, that one knockdown helped a lot. But then, Steelhead accidentally committed himself a little bit too much. Was in too close of a range right there. And Jamboree saw that opportunity, took advantage of it, activated the rush right there. And again, once the opponent has rush, it is so dangerous. Because like I said, you can cancel your whiffs. You can cancel your block stun. You can... Do all sorts of if you gain so much more ability to punish things when you have your rush ready to go and Steelhead looking like maybe being a little bit too close range, a little too aggressive there, and Jamboree punishing it up properly. So Mummy gets screwed in that, but um, of course Mummy also gains health while blocking, if I'm not mistaken. So that actually sounds really kind of powerful, but I'm sure very balanced out depending on, uh, you know, uh, how, how his movement and stuff is. And he's definitely a heavy character. So. All right. Nice catch right there. And again, you can see right now that whenever there is the availability of a column, that it is something that Steelhead tries to use a lot for uh, defense. Like I said, to kind of negate the multi-shot. Oh, there we go. Gets the knockdown. Tries to chase her down. 
thought she was might have switched back in the original direction she was coming from, but Jamboree committed to just scooting towards the the to to his right. Uh, I'm sorry, to his left the entire way. Nice deflection on the multi shots right there. So you can punch those, and now another column down. So no more, not a lot of defense now for the columns for Steelhead. So at this point in time, you're gonna have to deal with uh, the multi shot a lot. Oh no, there's one more column right there. Oh, but got knocked down. And here we go. Takes out the column almost instantaneously. Yeah, I definitely feel like that this is a smart strategy from Jamboree to try to take out the columns because that makes the effectiveness of the multi-shot that much more powerful and much more of a nuisance here. Good deflection again uh, against that. Yeah, just punching them. You can see every time he punches them. But when you punch the, the shots, that ends your punch, if I'm not mistaken. You can't punch through the missiles if I and then and then still hit Twintel if I'm not mistaken. Once you punch the missiles, the missiles stop if I'm not uh, if I'm not wrong. But look at this, the time is about to run out, so she's trying to chip him. Actually got the hit. Uh, but you know what? Oh no, that was it right there. That might yes, that is gonna do it. That last hit right there from Hanukkah Jamboree at the last second is gonna give him that round and Hanukkah Jamboree trying to come back from 0-2 was down 0-2 tied at 2-2 and now has the lead here all right and so he is at match point versus Steelhead to try to get into grand finals gets the knockdown and just going with the missiles. You can see right now, this is Jamboree's game plan. Just going with the missiles and really trying to n be a nuisance so badly to Steelhead, not even going for a lot of throws. He hasn't even really been trying to go for too many throws, I feel like. It's just really just about poking and picking at him to death, just little by little by little. And uh, Steelhead right now trying to find a way to get some... Oh, no, gets knocked down. He has the rush. Now, is he going to try to be a little aggressive because she has a rush too? Nice one-two combo right there. So good hit confirm from Steelhead. But just taking little bits of damage here and there again. He's still down in life. He needs to get something going here. He needs to get a hit. Only 39 seconds left on the clock. Nice track down, but uh, Jamboree was able to block in time. So there we go. Nice avoidance. God, right now, Jamboree is being so slippery right now. So hard for him, for Max Steele to get any hits. And I haven't seen Max, and I think Max Steele is just a little too scared to go for the throws right now because if he whiffs the throw, a rush activation will spell the end of him. So there was the throw attempt, but I don't think uh, Jamboree saw it in time. But Jamboree says, you know what, I'm just going to turtle over here. I don't care what you do, I'm just going to block. The time is about to run out. Activate, yeah, here we go. And no good, no dice. And look at that, Jamboree. Jamboree is going to make the comeback all the way, all the way. So beautiful stuff there. Very defensive play, very defensive style right there uh, from uh, Hanukkah Jamboree. And Hanukkah Jamboree does make the comeback all the way from 0-2 down there and did it largely with the use of that multi-shot, brilliant multi-shot uh, use right there. So great stuff. Great stuff. Uh, all right. So we are here at the grand finals now. It is going to be Jamboree versus Dastardly. Of course, Dastardly uh, on the winner's side. So Jamboree has to take uh, two sets of three out of five in order to win. Now, um, one thing I will mention here is that you are watching the FGC Locals of the World. And uh, this is an event that takes place at the WFGC Monthly. Uh, let me see. Uh, I forgot the name of the university. At St. Louis University here. Uh, St. Louis University here. And another thing that I want to do here, if I can get this out onto the screen... Hang on a second, guys. I want to do something here for you guys real quick. All right. Let's see if I can um, throw this out here. want to take the opportunity. Let's see. Uh, 
Display capture. Display capture two. Crop to window, and the window will be. Uh, here we go. There we go. Okay. What is going on over here? Still cropping out to that man. Okay. What I did want to do. What I also want to do here was uh, give a quick shout out to uh, also this event coming up from uh, the St. Louis University crew over here. You can see they have an event coming up called uh, Smash Out 2018. This is St. Louis's uh, St. Louis biggest charity fighting game event. And it's uh, the second installment of the Smash Out tournaments. So you can see right here, uh, the St. Louis University Esports is working with the Webster Fighting Game Community and SLUAAA to raise money for Extra Life, a program that helps children hospitals around the world. Uh, they will also be taking in canned donations for the Jewish family and children's services. So the five games that are the main games that are going to be played on the stream are ARMS, Super Smash Brothers Melee, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, Tekken 7, and Dragon Ball Fighters, and there will be side tournaments for Super Smash Brothers for Wii U, uh, Rivals of Ether, Sailor Moon S, nice, wow, 32 players for Sailor Moon, Guilty Gear, up to 32 players, and Blaze Blue Cross Tag, 32 players. This is going to take place on December 15th at the St. Louis University Bush Student Center. So definitely check it out. Oh, look at this. They've got an upgraded venue, even bigger and better than last year. And it's an event entirely for charity. Uh, they're going to have a bunch of stuff on the side. You can see they're going to have a silent auction featuring gift baskets and collector's items like custom-made controllers. They have a raffle with prizes, uh, such as shaving someone's face live on stream. No! And uh, vendor booths. Smash Ultimate will be free to play, compete with other, other video games as well, and more. And if you would like to sponsor this event, please contact them. Look for... Uh, Smash Out 2018 on Smash.gg. As you can see, this all this information is on Smash.gg. So if you ever need any sort of information about this event, check there. They're already sponsored by uh, Two Plumbers, Brewery and Arcade, uh, Pieces, Original St. Louis Board Game, and Bar Cafe. So check these guys out. Check out this event. And if you're in the area and would like to contribute or would like to visit, or even if you're not in the area and would like to contribute, look up Smash Out 2018 on uh, Smash.gg for some information for that event that's coming out right there. So there you go. But again, you guys are watching FGC Locals of the World. This is the series of streams where I... Uh, as and I, when I say I, I mean me. Hey, there we go. James Chen uh, will do commentary for your locals to try to bring awareness and bring more eyes to your event, and so uh, and to your games and to your communities here. And so the St. Louis Arms community hit me up here, and here we have this right now for the top four for the STL Arms community. We are at grand finals right now. If you guys are enjoying this and actually uh, watching this and going, huh, you know what? This game looks really cool, and I, I kind of want to get into this, and I want to learn more about it. Uh, follow them on Twitter at STL Arms, of course, STL for St. Louis, and then also uh, twitch.tv slash STL Arms as well follow this channel that this was originally broadcast on last saturday uh so you definitely want to check that out uh you know i just kind of realized right now did you guys call yourself the saint the stl arms because it was kind of like a a pun of the st louis rams which obviously they're the los angeles rams now right yeah so uh but still, you know, it's just like it's all the same letters, <laughs> STL arms, STL rams. Anyways, uh, but yes, yeah, so we're here at the grand finals. Again, any donations and bits counter that were obtained during this, uh, any bits that we get during this stream will go directly to the streamers themselves. And so we are going to finish off over here with the grand finals of arms again this is a top four right now it is a dastardly who is in winner's side bracket going up against hanukkah jamboree on the loser side here we go 
So again, Hanukkah Jamboree needs to win two sets, but dastardly going with Dr. Coyle. Dr. Coyle, who we have seen has been a problem, and uh, really these two fought each other on winner's side, and uh, Hanukkah Jamboree just had some trouble, just had trouble locking uh, Dr. Coyle down. Dr. Coyle, I've been told uh, by the chat, is very similar to a guile kind of style play. Very hard to lock down, very defensive, and you can see right there when Dr. Coyle gets up, is invisible a little bit. You can kind of track it if you if you can watch carefully, but look at this right now. Hanukkah Jamboree, it may be just feeling a little, you know, a, a little bit on fire after that loser side comeback match because Hanukkah Jamboree with a great start over here oh my god with a huge life lead but here we go dastardly trying to make the comeback right now nice little avoidance right there of the punches and getting those clips right there and again oh nice job again right now with the uh horizontal wide interesting you know i, I almost feel like that maybe you'd want to go with the vertical wide so that you can actually lock down cobra the, the 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 jumping stuff a little bit better but maybe that's just not working out I, I can't remember if that's exactly what uh jamboree tried the first time but right now it looks like the horizontal multi-shot is working out very well but oh my god just got picked up here we go rush and this round is all going dastardly's way and another throw great job so this is one thing that we saw right there from uh the last Last match, it looked like Max Steele wasn't able to get any throws on Jamboree, but Dastardly with two throws and gets a perfect, a perfect, oh my god, and here we go. Just playing some defense right now, just trying to play some defense, trying to hunt this character down. You can see again, tough to lock down because... Dr. Coyle floats up and down, up and down. So lots of different ways to avoid attacks without having to worry about jump lag. So it's just so mobile of a character that it's really hard to lock down. So, you know, when you see the multi shots, you can change the height all of a sudden and avoid uh, the, the multi shots entirely. And man, yeah, very, very tough uh, right now here, but a good start for Dastardly and avoids. Oh, nice! A little adjustment to get about 120 damage, which is better than nothing out of the rush right there. Okay. And now defending. Got, not, got her out of the air, but of course she always counts as grounded, so... Uh, the shots that hit her out of the air, like the missiles, won't knock her to the floor like it would to get other airborne characters. You actually just have to hit with strong knockdown attacks in order to get that kind of Okazemi. Nice. Okay, dashed and was able to block and saw, you see right there, you, the way that, you know, what I'm assuming what Jamboree did was, you know, saw which of his arms was activated and was able to dodge in the proper direction right there to avoid the attacks from Dr. Coyle, the, the rush from Dr. Coyle. But here we go again now with a, just needs to do a slight damage. And yes, that's where the multi-shot is going to shine for sure, is really close to the end of a round like that. Uh, wow, so in the most recent patch, the arms toaster and roaster had their extension speed nerfed and charged extension speed buff. The overall change was a two-frame nerf on both. Huh, interesting. Okay. But good job to Jamboree right there, taking game number one. Like I said, we remember seeing in the first uh, match, it looked like uh, Dastardly really just kind of had the upper hand. But that's always one of the nice things about it when you play uh, in loser's bracket and you come winning from the loser's finals. You're kind of like, your hands are warm, you're kind of feeling it, you're on a mental high, you're like, I did it, and so, you know, I'm, I'm here in grand finals, so it can definitely help you out a lot. Oh, nice throw to start right away, and those are some pretty long-range throws, too. Just a nice read on the direction that Jamboree is trying to move here. But again, still going with the umbrella and, uh, oh, and there you see the umbrella getting the connect right over there. Again, 100 damage for that umbrella. Again, now the 1-2 combo from the umbrella and the glove. 150 total damage. So right now, uh, looks like Dastardly is doing really, really well here with a decent life lead. But here we go, opportunity trying to chase. And you saw right there, it has to stop 
punching so that she can turn a little bit faster and try to re-aim the rushes, but it was too late by then. Dastardly had gone away, gotten away from the rushes. <coughs> mm. Oh, okay, Not, a little too slow for the combo right there. Both arms out, <coughs> a little bit vulnerable at this situation, so Dastardly definitely willing to go for it. Oh, wait, third glove now. So that always makes it tricky because then when you see two arms out, that might not even necessarily be a situation where <coughs> Dr. Coyle has uh, her movement limited because it might have just been one of the random arms that sprung from her shoulder. Nice defense against the throw. And now just defending against it. And uh, interesting, not going to go for the... Oh, because you know why? Because Jamboree had a rush all ready to go too. You could actually punish the rush on block. Oh, guard broken, guard broken. <clears throat> so that's why uh, Dasher, he didn't even want to go for the chip damage when he had the rush there in that situation. All right, nice dodging right now from Dastardly, man. And there we go, the activation, but defense right there knows that uh, Jamboree does not have a rush to counter. Jamboree almost has the super built up. Very close to getting that built up right now. But look at this, too much defending and uh, almost getting all the guard broken at this point in time. So things are definitely going dash on these way, but here we go. Chance for a comeback, good damage right there, 280, but you see Coil still with most of the life, and then Coil dastardly waking up with a throw out of the invisibility. Oh man, and catching Jamboree unawares, and now Jamboree with not a lot of health. Dastardly is going to take that one. Wow, wake up, throw from Dastardly to, to kind of use the invisibility to, to, to mask the reaction time of the throw, it feels like. So there we go. Tied 1-1 now between Hanukkah Jamboree and Dastardly. See what uh, Jamboree decides to go for any sort of change over here. It looks like he's going to try to change. So Tri-Blast worked really well for him in the first one, but he's going to change it right now. He's going to go. Oh, no. He's going to. No. Okay, there we go. So there we go. He's going with the Hydra now. So is he going to go for a double multi-shot? Is he going to go for double multi-shot here? That would be really interesting. I'm not sure if that was the vertical multi-shot. Or if that was the horizontal multi-shot. Let's see what he goes with here. The Hydra and the Tri-Blast? No, okay. Going to go with the curve instead. Going to stick with the curve. Okay. So, yeah, you see right now, switching to the vertical multi-shot, which is what I was talking about a little bit earlier. I figured that would work really well because when you see the multi-shot uh, come out uh, when you're uh, Dr. Coil, I'm assuming you could just kind of switch levels and almost kind of negate that multi-shot. So by going with the vertical one, at least now you're forcing... Uh, coil to have to move left and right to avoid it. Yeah, you see right there the, the vertical multi-shot paying dividends already here for Jamboree. Great damage to start off. And now trying to get the nice! You see that hook from the right hand going left and then curving to the right. Got him and that's what the curve does. The curve really good aim. So what I really like about this weapon combination from Jamboree right now is that the Vertical multi-shot is forcing uh, Dastardly to move left or right, and then he is trying to predict the movement with the curve. So it's forcing the left-right movement and then going with the curve. So these two weapons really trying to complement each other. And look at this. Jamboree has barely taken any damage, but that throw will be a good chunk of damage right there. So I really like what Jamboree is doing here right now. Every time he fires that shot, there it is! Beautiful! Shot, and as soon as he shoots the vertical shot, you can see that Jamboree is trying to predict which way Dastardly's going. So he fires the vertical multi-shot and then the curve, the boomerang, right away to try to uh, predict which way it's going. So there you go. There he predicted to the, to the left. And now again to the left, and it is working like a charm right now. So Dastardly needs to make some sort of adjustment here, and Dastardly's doing really well with the throws so far. So it feels like that's where Dastardly is getting a lot of damage. Great avoidance and blocking, but right now almost guard broken. But a counter rush right now. Going to defend against that. Going to block. And you can see right there, once you get the uh, rush activated, the, the, the boomerang just becomes uh, uh, tornado projectiles. And uh, there we go again. Another great shot. Shooting those uh, 
but you know, the risky part about what Jamboree is doing, obviously, is that committing the two arms at once, but you can see the missiles look like they can fire so fast and, and fire again. Oh, man. So, uh, oh, finally, here we go. But right now, Dastardly with the life lead, so playing really well this round here, adjusting to the strategy that Jamboree is going for. Jamboree trying to close in right now, trying to give him a little less distance. Nice. Oh, but then the missiles caught her. Knocked her down as well. Is that the vertical missiles also knock down on hit? So that's that's actually really, really uh, important. What a throw from Jamboree. Do you see that? Just dodge into the throw. Activate the rush to punish the throw. Great job for Hanukkah Jamboree. Two great moves right there. A sidestep into a throw and then a dodge of Dastardly's throw attempt into the um, into the rush attack and was able to punish there and Jamboree is up two to one. One second guys. Again, definitely follow these guys on twitch.tv slash STL arms and on Twitter at STL arms to give these guys support. But obviously Jamboree is not going to change the strategy. It's working really, really well here. And uh, this stage, of course, no columns here. So that's even going to be a little bit uh, tougher right now for Dastardly, I feel like. But I, I love this combination of weapons right now. But good throw by Dastardly. Dastardly, like I said, has been really on point with those throws. It seems like he's been able to get a lot of good situations where he's just had a great prediction on where Jamboree wants to go. Here we go. Gets up. Now... Throwing out one punch, two punch, both defended. Okay, there we go. Got one to connect against Jamboree now. But his Jamboree stuck in the corner. And again, activating the rush. As soon as Jamboree saw the throw coming out, he knew that that was the opportunity. Once you go for that throw, you are committed to it. And so a rush counter right there. And so Jamboree with a huge life lead. This is doing really, really well. Should I call him Hanukkah instead? Should I call him Hanukkah instead of Jamboree? Sorry, I'll call him Hanukkah instead. But this uh, weapon loadout has been working really well and interesting. Dastardly now going with just two gloves. Going with two gloves. And you saw right there the throw with couldn't dash very far. There we go. There we go. So maybe the two gloves is actually going to work out. And a third glove right there. Tacking off of the shoulder every once in a while. That extra one shows up. Tried to get the whiff punish, but just clipped and wasn't able to get the full rush. Okay, but uh, Dasherly able to defend that one right now. Okay, here we go. Trying to go for those punches, but getting knocked down again. It's just... Oh, and now getting the throw. So Jamboree, once got up close, has been doing such a great job manipulating Jamboree's move. I mean, manipulating Dastardly's movement. And then finally gets in close for the throw. Because remember, you can block those missiles and they'll do minor chip damage. But that's always the danger is that throw. So uh, what I like about this is that, like I said, the vertical shot really limiting the up and down movement of Dr. Coil right now. And uh, there we go. Gets another throw. So Jam Jamboree hasn't really been going for a lot of throws. But this round already landing two throws. So I think that's huge right now. But yeah, the, the, the nice thing about the vertical shot, like I said, really doing a great job limiting the movement. But you can see right here, Dastardly still has a life lead. Needs to just get a little bit more damage. And this choice of going with just the two regular gloves might have been a good choice right now. Just needs the basics right now to be able to fight this. And there we go. Oh, no. It wasn't a kill. That was an activation. But just trying to go for the chip. Getting knocked down. Oh, my gosh. Four seconds. Three, two. Oh, he's just going to try to go for the chip. Is it enough? Is it enough? No, it's not going to be enough the defense holds out for dastardly so dastardly ties it up one one all right no problem dastardly not a problem i know it's very late over there so it is all good i hope you guys i hope the arms community you guys are enjoying this right now here we go and trying to go for the double punches yeah wow look at this both of them committing to dual punching a lot right now so uh, I noticed Dastardly punching with both hands right now. There we go. Back and forth. Back and forth. One, two. One, two. Tried to predict right there. Get a good hit. 
But right now, Dashley doing a really good job kind of dodging. Oh, no, a little bit too close there. and Went for the uh, rush, and Twintel is just sitting there on her rush waiting to see if Dastardly makes a mistake and tries to go in. Try to go for a punch. Uh, go for a throw. Didn't get the throw, and Dastardly got the hit with the gloves. And Dastardly, what's interesting right now is what everybody has told me about what Dr. Coyle does is that Dr. Coyle is really good at playing distance game, really hard to lock down, really hard to chase down. But what you're seeing here is that Dastardly is being pressured into approaching Jamboree. Dastardly is the one that's trying to chase down Jamboree at this point in time. As a result, gets hit by the rush, and Hanukkah Jamboree has reset the bracket, and we are now both in loser's side. So it is now a straight up two, uh, I'm sorry, three out of five grand finals, final set right here. And this is working out so well for Jamboree because he has not had to worry about the movement of coil as much thanks to the vertical uh, multi-shot and has just been able to just kind of bide his time, poke away from far away and really put the onus on Dastardly. So Dastardly is going to go back to the glove and umbrella combination right now. Okay. And right there, she's throwing out the... Uh, see, again, the vertical right there. Great stuff, but both arms are out, so Dastardly didn't quite have the uh, movement. And you can see Dastardly is the one that's trying to close the distance right now against Jamboree, whereas Jamboree is the one that's just kind of hanging back right now, firing, blocking, just firing some missiles. But, you know, that's why Dastardly's been able to land some throws from time to time because... Oh, there we go! There's a great sequence right there. So that's kind of something that he's been looking for, but then... Gets picked up by the rush. 340 damage rush. Nice punish on the throw, but not a huge amount of damage. Might have tried to go for the rush instead. Uh, just And there we go, the activation. Oh, and does pick her up. Does pick up uh, Twin Tail right there. Uh, stopped punching, turned around slightly, readjusted the aim, and got the hit at that moment in time. There we go, another 100 damage punch right there from the glove. But yeah, right now, it's it, like I said, the, the multi-shot I feel like is the anti-Cobra weapon right now. It is working out so well for Dastardly. There we go, the activation in the rush. Okay, but good. W weathered that storm here, and now his turn to activate the rush. Yes, Dastardly getting the whiff punish with the rush attack and taking that round. But again, there is no reason for Jamboree to switch the setup at all. Dastardly now... Uh, Doing well right now with the umbrella and the glove combination. Uh, the umbrella, perhaps because of its better homing ability. Uh, but I think the umbrella, if I'm not mistaken, has limited range, right? It doesn't go as far as the glove. So that might be one of the reasons why Dastardly is trying to stay a little bit closer. Has better homing, but I do not believe it travels as far because it stops and opens up after a certain amount of distance. Nice reaction with the rush and 360 damage off of that. Goes for the throw and a beautiful rush punish this time from Dastardly. So there you go. Punishing the throw whiff right there. Beautiful stuff. And here we go. Guard, almost guard broken on the left side. The, the multi-shot is almost guard broken, and that's actually kind of key uh, for... Oh, no, never mind. It's going to be fine just right now. So now uh, no, no longer danger of the guard crush, but that with throw punish with the rush from Dastardly was key right there. Jamboree going for a... Really going for a hard read in that situation, really trying to find the direction that Dastardly, uh, that, uh, Dastardly was going to try to go, missed it, and was punished uh, pretty badly for it. And, and that, I felt like, was the key right there. Had Jamboree just been stayed a little more patient instead of going for the throw. But you got to go for the throw every once in a while, right? Because otherwise, uh, Dastardly knows going to be able to play a little bit more defensive. So you want to take advantage of that just a little bit. But uh, I really doubt that Jamboree is going to change the weapon set. Starting off right away with a curve 110 hit. Oh, the umbrella right to the face for 100 damage. Okay. You can see Dastardly right now. Uh, what's interesting right now is that uh, Jamboree's movement... Oh, never mind. Got thrown. There we go. 
So good stuff there. We haven't seen Dastardly get a throw on Jamboree in quite some time, but that's pretty nice right there. That's going to help him try to stay up. Oh, that he avoided the... Avoided right there. Uh, and Rush is gone. And a great alpha counter, basically. A guard cancel into the Rush right there from Jamboree to get a huge amount of damage on Jamboree. So now... And then the throw just to add on to things right there. Jamboree with a beautiful round. A beautiful round right there. Okay, so a few of the pros do use traditional... I mean, use uh, motion controls. Okay. All right, here we go. Dodging, nice dodges right there. Oh, but actually dodged into a punch right there. You can see right now, uh, this time, no umbrellas. So even though Dastardly uh, won, well, actually lost that last round. Yeah, never mind, actually. But going with two gloves now. So trying to throw a different look at, um, going with a different right look <laughs> to, uh, to, to this matchup. Now Jamboree right now, again, just zoning with those vertical missiles. We know what the strategy that he's going with. And you see, oh, there's the activation and the counter activation. But you saw right there, Jamboree had stopped its punching in time, but then went for it. And a uh, nice avoidance right there for Dastardly. So Dastardly was able to get some good damage off of that, off of his rush. And again, just barely avoiding those vertical missiles. Not that time. Does get hit. And like I said, the, the fact that those vertical missiles knock down is huge. I feel like that's the, the anti-coil weapon. Like, I feel like if you are fighting against coil, you got to just use that. But I'm sure it works better for faster characters. Going for a throw. Nice dodge on the throw, but no punish from Dastardly. Dastardly. Now both of them are sitting on there. Oh, no. He tried to get away, but he couldn't quite get away. Three, 265 damage. But he still has his own... Uh, charge ready to go uh and there it is the activation and he gets the hit is that gonna be enough to kill not enough it is not enough to kill and now just a little bit though he just needs one more hit and now it just goes back to the basic style right here oh but dash right into that punch beautiful aim and prediction right there for coil he has the life lead and that is why jamboree had to commit to something and he just got punched right there what a comeback from dastardly right at the end Good job. All right, so here we go. Dastardly tying up one to one. Yeah, I don't understand why there is anybody hating on any game here. All games are legit. There is no hate over here. We are all friends over here. So I'm going to go ahead and time you out here. Here we go. Let's continue forward here. There's that third glove right over there. We promote fighting game love over here on the Chen Dynasty. We love all fighting games. So good landing of that rush right there. So give him a good, decent life lead here. So Twintel, you can see, still far from building her, uh, her own uh, super meter right now and just getting clocked every once in a while. So right now, it seems like this uh, double glove... Instead of going with regular glove, regular glove, it looked like he went with regular glove and heavy. And that seems to have been working, that seems to be working out a little bit better for Dastardly right now because getting a little bit more damage from. Actually, this looks like heavy and heavy. I'm not sure. I can't recognize them on by sight just yet. But what Jamboree really got to do right now is just chip away very slowly, but has the super now. They both have rush available. So now it's kind of that game of chicken. Who's going to activate the rush first and find the right opportunity to punish uh, the rush? Good defense right there. Saw that the pit fist was still coming. Oh, and now Jamboree down to very low health. One good rush will should be able to take this. Uh, for either player right now. But again, they're playing chicken. There we go. Activating. And now, oh my god, there's going to be... No, none of the counter. Six seconds left. Activate. Got the chase down. But then, oh, didn't qu quite commit to it. So he's going to get punched down and Dastardly is going to take it. Woo! At the last second. Oh, man. Great stuff right there. And Jamboree had that opportunity. Got the punch. But then just didn't keep punching. So didn't get the full combo right there. So Dastardly now up 2-0 in this final set over uh, Jamboree. Jamboree doing a great job on the first game to, to reset the bracket with the weapon set that he's had. But now, it, I wonder if Jamboree is questioning that. No, okay, he was just waiting for Dastardly to pick his character. I don't think Jamboree should switch the characters at all.
Ah, oh, okay. So Coil's sliding movement often allows her to accidentally slide too far and miss her opponent if you're not too careful. So there is a little bit of, uh, you know, care in the way that her, in her movement right there, just to make sure that you don't accidentally slide too far. Okay, but uh, looks like uh, Twintel, it has indeed. Okay, so switched over to uh, two multi shots. So in, instead of covering the vertical only or the horizontal only, I think what this idea from Jamboree is, is that he is going for the high and the low at the same time. So basically you can multi-shot up and multi-shot low and really try to control the space right now that uh, what Dash at least trying to do. So another take on uh, trying to lock down uh, Dashedly. And the nice thing about these is the missiles really do recover quickly, it looks like. They fire and then you can kind of attack again, but you can see one of the weaknesses of it. Well, I don't know. That was actually a full 330 damage. Okay, so never mind. I thought it was going to do less damages on the rush just by being a less damaging uh, glove overall, but no, still getting 330 damage. So good amount of damage right there. And you can see that the benefits of the two different kind of gloves right now are working out. Uh, really well and it looks like uh, this glove has the fire property so it is causing the knockdown against dastardly and here we go right now with a big life lead but got to be careful one hit in the rushes might kill but again the counter poke with the multi shot okay so i actually really like this strategy from jamboree i really honestly thought the vertical and the boomerang was a great choice but i like this different look here and one of the things is that coil might have actually started feeling really comfortable but the rush from jamboree was taken out so that's huge right there from dastardly but here we go again like i said i thought that the boomerang and the uh the vertical multi-shot was a good combination, but this is actually working out really well because before when he, uh, when Jamboree only just had the one multi-shot, oh, he wants to guard break him, but instead just gets the damage, and you know what? He'll take that. He will take that. Went for the throw. Risky stuff right there. But again, by having the double multi-shot up and down isn't necessarily as safe. And there we go. Oh, again! The rush was taken out. Two rushes taken out by Dastardly. So Dastardly with some good stuff over here in this round and now has his own rush all ready to go to counter. So now Jamboree has to be careful launching too many missiles right now. If he launches too many of the, the, the multi-shots, he could get countered with the rush right now. Oh, boy. Risky again two fists, but they're working out look at that one two one and then a one two and then another one two Beautiful stuff from dastardly and now he is at match point Okay So tri blast apparently was super good, but has been nerfed interesting. Okay, so doesn't quite have the uh, OP ness that it used to have and here we go and a counter rush from Dastardly. This is huge right now. Dastardly with a big life lead. And again, of course, the biggest weakness of the Tri-Blast uh, is that it's not a lot of damage. And we see that uh, I think Jamboree didn't like that. The, the, the low damage from the Tri-Blast, it was just 50, 50, 50, 50 here and there. So he has switched back to the vertical Tri-Blast and the uh, Boomerang to, to try to get some more damage. He just didn't like the low damage output. And there we go. Conversion into it. Not going to be quite enough to kill, but Dastardly is right there he is right at the point where he just needs one more punch and there it is dastardly takes it 3-0 in the bracket reset dastardly is the mf uh m wfgc champion from last week there we go great job to him and so congratulations to dastardly for that win right there and that was your top four uh st louis arms tournament right there from wfgc monthly taking place in uh st louis missouri at uh the university university where is the name of the university again my bad, the St. Louis University, St. Louis University. So congratulations uh, to uh, Dastardly there for that win. Uh, I really liked all the different kind of loadout combinations that um, 
that Jamboree was going for unfortunately did not work out in the end and Dastardly is your champion. Congratulations to Dastardly. So great job to him. And uh, he is the champion here. And that was actually, for me, that was actually super cool. So when I, I remember watching ARMS a little bit at uh, EVO Japan and watching ARMS a little bit at another event. I believe it was either CEO or one of the other events. So when I was watching it at EVO Japan, and David said this as well, when we were both watching it, we were like, okay, okay, this looks, because I remember David had kind of a negative opinion at first when the game came out, but when we were at EVO Japan, he was like, okay, no, wait, no, this looks actually really kind of cool. And for me to learn about the game and seeing the different kind of loadouts and starting to understand the strategy of this a little bit, that was actually super cool. I actually really enjoyed that. And uh, hey, look, if you guys have more arms that you want me to commentate, I would love to do that. And, you know, I can definitely learn some more arms commentary. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, to do that. And again, just really, really strong uh, play right there from Dastardly. Look, I'm not going to lie. Dr. Coyle looks really, really good. <laughs> but like I said, uh, I really like what Jamboree, what Hanukkah Jamboree was trying to do to shut down Dr. Coyle. And again, it's just one of those things that, you know, I feel like one of the powers that Dr. Coyle has, it feels like to me, is that it kind of forces a play style on the opponent, right? So if you're not comfortable using vertical, vertical, or vertical curve, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, horizontal, horizontal, multi shots, or vertical curve, if that's not what your play style is, Dr. Coyle kind of forces you to do stuff like that. That's what it looks like in my opinion. So it seems like one of those characters that kind of takes away what you want to do. Uh, we've talked about this in lots of different fighting games. There are characters like Zangief in Street Fighter 4 or Potemkin in Guilty Gear. If you're a rushdown character or if you're like Slayer and you want to stay close in on the opponent all the time, all of a sudden you fight Potemkin and it's like, shit, well this sucks because that's what he wants, right? And so there are certain characters in certain fighting games that kind of force certain players to play in certain ways and I feel like that's what Dr. Coyle does, really kind of forces you to have to play a different style. So if you are, for example, a hammer and a missile user or if you're a hammer and a, and a, and a big glove user, you know, a heavy glove user, Dr. Coyle is really going to kind of ruin that kind of idea and you got to switch to different kinds of weapon sets, etc, etc. So really, really interesting stuff there to see how the matchups play around and kind of forces you to, 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 to use different kind of styles. But honestly, Jamboree, I felt like did a great job with the choice of the vertical and the uh, curve. Uh, style it worked really well against dastardly in that first set but dastardly great adjustments made the adjustments right there Looked like it was all about really switching to multiple gloves and not using the umbrella because the umbrella did have the problem of feeling like it didn't quite have the range and so that way uh, Twintel was able just to stay back and fire missiles and curve all day and uh, Dastardly was forced to kind of go in closer to use the umbrella but when he switched to the gloves and gave himself a little bit more range to punch longer distances I felt like that was kind of what turned it around for Dastardly and Dastardly seems like a uh, good job good job winning that there so uh, smash and splash four uh, so according to Superior fans, Smash and Splash 4 was the most stacked tournament ever uh, for ARMS so far. So that's actually really, really cool. Um, yeah, EVO Japan. And I'm sure ARMS is going to be at EVO Japan again uh, this year. There's been no official announcements of the game, but ARMS is very popular in Japan. Sold really, really, really well over there. So I imagine uh, there's a, still a strong scene over there. So there's going to be some good stuff over there again. Again, uh, I, I want to remind everybody that there is the uh, Extra Life event. Uh, make sure you check out Extra Life on uh, Smash.gg. Uh, this is also going to be at the St. Louis University. Uh, should I be saying St. Louis? I should be saying St. Louis, not St. Louis, right? Or is it both? What is it? What is the correct way to say this? Am I, have I been saying this wrong the whole entire time? <laughs> Yeah, ARMS definitely had a side tournament as well. Um, display capture to uh, window capture. Smash out details. There you go. 
Oh, they do say Lewis, huh? Interesting. Okay. But there you go. This is the Extra Life event. This is a charity event that's going to be taking place. You can see right there, put on by the WFGC at St. Louis University here. Uh, St. Louis's biggest charity fighting game event is back. It's going to be taking place on December 15th, uh, 2018 here. The full schedule will be out shortly. It'll be at the Bush Student Center at St. Louis University at 1 North Grand Boulevard, St. Louis, Missouri. Um, they have an upgraded venue, so uh, even bigger and better than last year. So you'll definitely want to check that out. A lot of cool side stuff going up there. There's going to be a silent auction, a, ra a raffle, vendor boots, Smash Ultimate is going to be there. And of course, it's going to be one of the main games, along with Melee, Arms, Tekken 7, and Dragon Ball Fighters. All those are going to be the main games. And there's going to be five side games that you can see are going to have some player caps. But it's going to be Super Smash Bros. for Wii U, Rivals of Ether, Sailor Moon S, Guilty Gear, and Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. That is happening on December 15th. You don't want to miss this. Definitely tune in. It is for a good cause. I see a lot of people out there doing a lot of good work for Extra Life. So this is something that you definitely want to tune into or help out. Or if you're in the area, make sure you visit it. And uh, hopefully you'll get a chance to... Help out and enjoy that event as well. Again, thanks guys uh, for tuning into this. this. is FGC Locals of the World. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Master PPV. We just finished uh, Grand Finals. It was actually really cool. Really, really enjoyed watching this. Really enjoyed commentating this. Um, I, I, you know, one of the things that I love to do is I love to understand what it is about a game that makes it the game, that makes it competitive. And I really felt like I got a really good, strong sense of that here, my first time commentating this game. Uh, I don't know if I can play ARMS Crocal. I'll, I'll be 100% straightforward. There are so many fighting games out there that it's really hard to find time to play these games. Uh, I've been trying to spend a lot of time playing Soul Calibur, Smash is coming out and everything like that, so it's really, really tough. But again, uh, I appreciate all the different kind of, uh, you know, strategies and skills and, 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 and all these things developed and the meta and all these things developed for all these different fighting games. It was really, really cool to watch this and really get a strong understanding of what makes ARMS tick. And I just think it's really cool to watch this community and hopefully, you know, they can continue to grow and, and do some really awesome stuff. So, yeah, it's really tough. And, and, you know, one of the things that does help me is that I did play Virtual On before. And like I said, ARMS really honestly is right there with the uh, Virtual On slash Gundam genre of fighting games. And yes, I did call them fighting games because I've called uh, Virtual On a fighting game in the past. I've always called that game a fighting game. And really, it's so similar to that. There's so many similar concepts to that. Although, ARMS really changes the ante. It ups the ante a little bit because there's blocking in this game. Virtual On, there really is no blocking. You just have to avoid everything all the time. And so, there's a lot more about just trying to bait someone into dash attacking and hitting them in the recovery. In ARMS, it's more about predicting predicting where they're going to dash and having this kind of defensive option really changes the way that the games are played but they are still very much in the same style of genre in my opinion so uh hey look frozen frack like i said now that i've done some of this commentary for arms if i keep doing more commentary for arms i'm just gonna go to events like scr if they run arm side tournaments i'll be like hey Put me on, coach. Put me on, coach. I will do some commentary for ARMS because, uh, like I said, I really enjoyed this. Actually, I really honestly enjoyed this. I'm not just paying lip service to the guys because I know you're in chat. I actually really did enjoy this and really had a good time kind of learning and understanding this game. And so uh, really kind of enjoyed about it, really enjoying it a lot. So... Uh, yeah, you can definitely tell the arms, uh, the, the producer, I forgot his name, but he's uh, been a very big support and he's been doing, he's the guy driving all the patches and stuff, very heavily influenced by the uh, virtual on games. Yeah, no, SCR definitely ran arms. I remember, I remember that. So, but uh, yeah, great stuff here. Thanks guys for, for keying me into this. This was great. And uh, last chance here, I'm going to be my televangelist self here again. Donation counter, bits counter at the bottom right there. Any donations and bits will be going straight back to the streamer. 
Uh, so the SD Alarms crew will be gaining some money out of this right now. So if you guys want to, uh, ya Yabuko, Yabuki is his name. Okay. But if any of you, oh, Style Red, nice. Okay. He, we saw him play a little bit earlier. Uh, but if you guys want to donate or donate some bits, this is your last chance, of course. And this money will go directly to the STL Arms community. Um, another thing I want to add here is that, you know, uh, I'm working on trying to get sponsors at this point in time. If I can get sponsors for the FGC locals of the world, I need to make a slide. I need to make my own slide for this. Why haven't I made my own slide for this? If I can get an FGC uh, uh, locals of the world sponsor, like, you know, I'm going to try to hit up HyperX or Vertigear or, you know, uh, Victrix, any of these kind of companies. So to, to play their slides, if I can get that, then this service will become a free service full disclosure again I'm not trying to hide the fact that I'm charging for the service here I'm charging for the service because you know it definitely takes time and stuff like that and, and I am a you know a starving artist commentator right now commentary honestly doesn't pay a lot of the bills you'd be surprised uh, uh, how how little commentary pays so I'm trying to do stuff for myself on the side but if I can get a sponsor then uh, with all that money will basically be covered uh, I will not charge anybody for anything at all so there you go so but yeah for sure uh, uh, thanks guys for tuning in. Thanks guys for watching. Thanks for introducing me to arms and I hope the arms community guys out there did enjoy this and you know, um, man, uh, you know, uh, I'll definitely be contacting you guys very soon. Uh, and that way, oh, shout outs to Spike251. Oh, there we go. So there we go. An extra donation at the last second coming in at the last at the buzzer. Don't. Okay. Funny man, funny man here, funny man. Donating $5.69. Well done. Well done. There you go. <laughs> so $5.69. So there you go. We have $26.09 for the St. Louis Arms community there. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. And um, uh, if we can, uh, oh, what was I going to say? Shoot, my this old man brain, old man brain, uh, old man brain here right now. Uh, so the oops, wrong one. FTC log, Chen logic. There you go. Okay, uh, but what I was gonna say was that uh, oh, that's right. Uh, I will contact you guys. Uh, I'll contact you, Hanukkah Jamboree. Uh, and uh, discuss to you about uh, VODs and stuff like that. Again, part of the service is that you guys are welcome to the VODs to put on your own channel. You can also basically request that I don't put it up on Ultra Chen TV, but uh, if not, then I will also probably put up most of these FGC locals of the world onto, you onto the Ultra Chen channel as well to try to gain viewership from there as well. So there you go. Uh, thanks guys for tuning in. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you hope the guys who have not watched arms before also enjoyed it. Hope you guys also saw it and saw a lot of the merits of the game and saw where the enjoyment factor for the game can come in. And that will maybe help it so that, you know, in the future tournaments when you see arms is being played at an event, you're like, oh, I want to watch the top eight of that arms uh, event as well. So Hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you guys like that. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching. Um, uh, I've got nothing else to say, so I'm just going to go ahead and close out. Uh, say goodbye. Say goodnight to my kitties. They've already been fed, so uh, there will be no food here. Sorry, my home is a mess right now. I am in the process of uh, doing major cleaning, and to clean my home, I need to throw everything into the middle of the floor and then clean it up afterwards. So... <laughs> There you go. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. I don't know when to shut up at the end of these things, so I will just go ahead and cut myself off right now. Thank you. Have a good night. Peace out, and uh, see you guys soon.